so tangential to the eugenics issues that I'm trying to make some videos and do some recordings about, um, there is the social and political connection, particularly in academic discourse. There is this piece of trash book uh, called The Mismeasure of Man, which if you are interested in uh, the politics of science or popular science, you might have come across this book before. Um, Stephen Jay Gould is an egalitarian, and a, or he was because he's dead now, thank God, but he was an egalitarian and a social justice warrior. His background is that he was raised in a Marxist Jewish household. His parents were immigrants from somewhere in Eastern Europe. And he was one of these people who came up in the mid to late 1960s promoting radical social change by any means necessary. He became a scientist uh, and became, you know, semi-famous for writing essays, uh, popular science essays that attempted to use scientific discourse as a mean for pushing uh, for social change. And he was good at it, or maybe he wasn't good at it, and some people who liked him had some money, so they pushed his stuff to the front, and people had to read it because there's an oligarchy of media control. You decide. But his book is interesting because it gives us an insight into the way that a lot of people, a lot of these people, our enemies, either think or have been conditioned to think one way or the other. The subject I wanted to talk about in particular is uh, an English... Uh, psychometrician and um, scientist of heredity whose name was Cyril Burt. He fa uh, factors quite prominently in this book, The Mismeasure of Man, because Gould takes uh, Cyril Burt uh, to task um, and kind of establishes him as the villain of the story. Cyril, B Cyril Burt uh, was an Englishman who was trained in the generation after, I would say, Carl Pearson. I think Burt died in the mid-1970s, something like that, so he would have been born a little bit after 1900. Burt loved his people, and he didn't like to see children living in physical and um, uh, emotional and um, um, uh, degradation. He didn't like to see squalor. So a bunch of stuff that he worked worked on earlier in his life were children who were exceptional. I think he wrote a book called The Exceptional Child. He wrote one book, which I read almost the entire thing because it was really, really good. It was called uh, uh, The Young Delinquent or Delinquent Child, something like that. And it was his efforts to, in a very rigorous and analytical way, um, go through what it was like to be a you know sort of like a street urchin uh, in in England in the 1920s or 30s and you know what it would be like to um, be living in one of these really dirty cities and have one parent only one parent and that parent being alcoholic anyhow he just went through lots and lots of data very costly data collection and analysis of uh, what what life was like for these kids so that presumably they could try to you know help them and do better Whereas, you know, uh, a guy like Stephen Jay Gould, on the other hand, his life mission is to try to push anti-racism by any means necessary. So, you know, let, let's just take it, take it from, from the beginning, like what are these guys about? Um, Stephen Jay Gould has to write and attack Cyril Burt in this book because Cyril Burt was one of the first guys to establish uh, conclusively that some amount of your behavior is inherited uh, through genetics. It's not uh, all environmental, and you really want for it to be environmental if you're an egalitarian and a social radical. Social radical in the traditional leftist sense. Because um, if, if things are genetic, then you can't necessarily fix them just with social programs and people need to be egalitarian. The left needs for people to be egalitarian because otherwise its entire project just falls apart. If people are different and if some people are better at things than others, then the uh, leftist egalitarianism just, you know, you don't really have like a place to get off the ground with it. So um, there's a really interesting article that I could suggest for you to, re okay, well, and basically the story is this. Cyril Burt dies. And after he dies, a whole bunch of people start saying that all of this guy's original data on twin studies uh, were faked. 
they say that it was faked because his uh, raw data could not be found after he died and that his conclusions were um, too precise. The numbers which uh, he reported to the public in his papers, the same numbers reappeared over and over again to a degree that it would be untrustworthy. So uh, that and a couple other things led several people, including Gould, Gould and others, you know, to say this guy was a complete fraud and therefore we know that the entire tradition which says that some amount of human behavior is heritable is a fraud and actually we really are egalitarians. People like Bert were racist Nazis and all this kind of stuff. Well, there's a paper, a uh, very interesting one, and I'll put the link to it below. It's by a guy named J. Philip Rushton. And this is someone that if you've, if you've read anything about IQ or the struggles over psychometrics um, in the last quarter of the 20th century, you know who J. Philip Rushton is. And this is a very, very good article refuting um, all of the garbage that Stephen Jay Gould wrote in his book trying to destroy this man. And it affirmed the vision that I have, Cyril Burt, after having read his books, um, or The Delinquent Child at least, and some of his other stuff. The main, uh, the main issue is that, the main statistic under question is the correlation between uh, some behavioral aspect of these twins who are raised apart. And this correlation was found to be 0.77. And since that same correlation coefficient was reported multiple times by Burt, it was said by Gould and others to have been faked. However, the modern replications and modern studies today doing the same thing come up with 0.75. So um, the more recent research has borne out exactly what Burt came up with, you know, at this point, what, 80 years ago, 70 years ago. Um, the aspect of his, um, of his the aspect of the attack on Burt that says that his raw data couldn't be found, um, Rushton says that that was actually due to his competitor rushing over to Cyril Burt's house immediately after he died and getting his, um, his maid or landlady or something to burn a bunch of his papers before anyone else got there, presumably to get rid of or to undermine, to undermine the position that this other guy was depending on. So, um, you know, it's weird, you know, these people, these people on the left, they, it's a truism to say that they always accuse you of what they're guilty of. You know, they call people racists. We know that they're the real racists, in fact, just against white people. And when they talk about people playing fast and loose with the truth, people playing fast and loose with numbers and uh, ideas, it's actually always them. One of the, the big complaints that Gould has in his book is that people like Bert use uh, reification that they come up with a, a concept that they're going to use that they attribute some kind of meaning to the cause or meaning to the to the idea but then they turn around and pretend as though the idea is a real thing you know if we were to do that with the left I mean are, are you kidding me people like Gould talking about the international brotherhood of all humankind and the worker and this kind of shit who reifies stuff more than the left but anyhow they're they're always going to be doing that kind of stuff so um, I, would, I would probably not recommend that you read this book unless you're a complete masochist or unless you're just really interested in um, like the bell curve, for example, because, of course, they go after that in here um, sh uh, shamelessly and fruitlessly, of course, at the end of the day. But I will post the link um, to this Rushton article because I think it's really good uh, about Cyril Burt. It might be interesting to you. Thank you for your time.